Hi, welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Christy. And I'm Sharla, and today we are doing recipes to help you keep those kids fed this summer. Yes, that is a big job. <laughs> I don't know how long you've been a parent, or if you are a parent, but if you have children, they eat, and they eat a lot. Every day! Every day! Why do, <laughs> why do they need to eat every day? <laughs> and it seems like in the summer, it's like all day every day. I think so. I, it, I feel like it. My son is 13. He is on the cusp of a major growth spurt. I, I have seen it happening. We like we yes. witnessed it happening. Yes. He is already a very tall boy. If I go a day or two without seeing him, it's a shock yeah. to see him. It's like he grows overnight <laughs> and he's very close to my height. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm pretty tall. Sharp is pretty short. But, you know, uh, he's a big kid. He's a tall boy. Yeah. So uh, he needs to eat. <laughs> and I don't know if it's like just my imagination, but I have four boys and three girls. But with my boys, I felt like in the summer, they just seemed to shoot up. And it was always just the summer. It was like the school year. Because they, they sleep little, more too. Could be. And the outside. Yeah. Although you you homeschooled, so her kids are outside most of the time anyway, a lot of the time. But yeah. it was, yeah, so much outside time, so much more sleeping. They got to eat. So let's keep those kids fed. Okay, so we're going to give you some recipes today. You are going to love these because they are so kid-friendly. And a lot of these, they can just grab out themselves. Mm -hmm. And so this is gonna cut down on your work a lot. I so love a lot. we're excited to help you out with this. Okay, so this first one, this is the very first time we are showing you this and it is a good one. Um, it was a big hit and I think it's gonna be a big hit at your house too. It is pizza sliders. This is easy to make and it makes a whole tray. So you've got 12 of them. Mm -hmm. If you wanted, you could, you've got a smaller family or whatever, you could do like half a tray at a time and just, you know, do, do the full that way. Do the full tray and, and cut them in half. Mm -hmm. You could put some in a bag. Like there's no reason that you couldn't. And these actually work great for leftovers too. So however you choose to do them, this is awesome. What you're going to do is you're going to get one of those packages of buns that are all attached. So you're going to do a dozen buns and they're attached. You can use Hawaiian rolls or you can just use dinner buns. And what we did is we went to Costco and we bought, they had two packs, like two, it was they're one pack, pans. but it's... They're called sheet pan buns. And yep. so what it is, it's one giant sheet pan. They fold it in half and package it. So there's 24 buns in there. I'm sorry if you're American and you call them rolls and you're laughing at us Canadians <laughs> calling them buns. Um, you're just going to have to deal with it because buns is a better word. It's kind of funny and buns, 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 buns. So you want to take your buns and carry on with your, carry so on with your recipe. I'm got, sorry. If you want to double this, then just head to Costco and you can get that pack that is two dozen and then you can easily double this. So that's what we did, but we're just gonna show you one here so that you know how to make a single one. So you're just gonna slice those buns so that they are all sliced in half. So it's kind of like you just wanna take, take off, the lid off the lid. Now you're gonna place that bottom row of buns in the bottom of your foil tray, your baking dish. You could also do this in a casserole dish if you have a rectangle casserole dish, but I don't like to hold mine hostage in the freezer, so I just did this in a foil tray. You're gonna top that with one cup of shredded mozzarella cheese, and then you're going to spread some pizza sauce on top of that mozzarella. Then you're gonna layer some pepperoni just on top of that pizza sauce, and you're gonna sprinkle some more shredded mozzarella on top of the pepperoni. This is so super simple. Now, here comes the part where it makes it taste delicious and even adults will like this recipe. What you're gonna do is replace that top lid of your buns and then using a pastry brush, you're going to put some melted butter on top of your buns. That's about a quarter cup of butter that's melted and then you're going to sprinkle this with grated Parmesan cheese and some dried Italian seasoning. And I'm telling you, 
that topping on these buns is what brings these up and elevates them and makes them kid friendly but adult friendly too so you're going to put this in your freezer of course you're going to cover it with some aluminum foil and then on the day that you go to make this you can cook these from frozen or thawed and you're going to just bake them in your oven now here's a fun little trick you can also bake these right on a campfire you can just bring these camping with you you can bake them on the, or if you have a fire pit in your backyard you can bake them there and you could put these in the barbecue so mm -hmm. you don't have to heat your house up you can make these anytime there's really no excuse to not make these because mm -hmm. you don't need special equipment you don't even need an oven you can just heat these up heck if it was a really hot day you could probably just put these on the driveway as long as that cheese will melt man you totally you totally could, totally could <laughs> So one more thing I just want to mention about the pizza sliders is now if you get the pepperoni slices that are smaller and you just put one on each individual bun, then these can be a pull apart. But I used larger pepperoni slices and so we did have to cut ours apart so that the pepperoni was kind of evenly distributed into all of the individual buns. So yeah. That's right. And then you could also do a thicker layer of them too. If you have teenagers that might want a, a little meatier slider than maybe your six-year-old. Yes. The other thing that I want to mention is my family was a huge fan of these, but one of my daughters has some texture issues. She found that the bun on the bottom was a little bit soggy for her. Now, we didn't find that it was soggy at all. I mean, with the butter, it actually well. kind of crisps up. Yeah. But, but underneath for the her, sauce, the right? pizza sauce, she found that it was a little bit like texturally not her favorite. So her suggestion would be to make these without the sauce and then use the sauce to dip. Oh, great idea. So if you feel like you might have texture issues, that's another option. My son, these are very similar to the ham and cheese sliders, mm -hmm. which we do make often as well. My son likes them, but he doesn't like, and they're, they're coming soon. He doesn't like that it's got the honey and the poppy seed drizzle yes. on it, and he doesn't like that it's sweet. He's like, I wish you would just make these that were sandwiches. And I'm like, well, then they would just be sandwiches. <laughs> All right. I could just make you a ham and cheese sandwich on a bun. But we're going to elevate it with these ham and cheese sliders. Get this. They're just like the pizza sliders, but they're ham and cheese sliders. So and so <laughs> you could go to Costco, get that two-pack. You could get two two-packs. And double both, or mm -hmm. just use, if you're not sure about these recipes and yeah. you want to pick a favorite, you could make the pizza sliders with one half mm -hmm. and make the ham and cheese sliders with the other one. You totally could. So we're going to do the same process here. We're going to take our slab of buns, the 12 buns that are all connected there. Um, I use like a, a nice big bread knife and I hold them and I go ch -ch 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 all the way through and you flip that lid back. We're gonna add the deli ham that's just been sliced. So you can add 12 slices or you can add, you can measure ham with your heart on this one and just whatever covers the buns nicely. And same thing with the cheese. Um, sometimes six will fit nicely in your pan, sometimes eight will fit. It's whatever you want. So you could use any kind of cheese you want. In this case, we used marble, but you could use Swiss, you could use cheddar, you could do a Monterey Jack if, or a Havarti. If you could find it in the little squares, it's nice when it's pre-sliced. If you don't want to pay the extra for the sliced, go ahead and slice your own cheese, but then you're at your own mercy of how much you slice to put on there. But you'll figure it out because of course you can. Then we're going to put the lid back on top and then in a dish, we are going to mix melted butter, some mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, Worcestershire sauce. We're going to add in some poppy seeds, some honey and some dried onion. We're going to whip that all together and then drizzle it over your sliders in the pan. And so I think for my son, it was the, the poppy seeds and the honey that he wasn't a super fan of. Um, now that I am reading through this again, maybe maybe the onion and maybe the Worcestershire sauce. So, like, <laughs> so that's fine, you know your kids. If they're not gonna eat this, modify it or skip that part or make it a dip that they can dip it in. But what that does, the, the butter drizzles down and it crisps up on the bottom and these, to me, are texturally phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put the tin foil on, you're going to put this in your freezer, 
and then to cook it, I personally like to thaw it all the way through because when you're cooking it from frozen, the outside cooks faster than the inside. So then you're checking it every 10 minutes and you're like, you're sticking your finger in there and you can see that it's crisping up on the outside and you're like, no, it's still pretty frozen in the center. So, so that's, it's a, you know, if you want to do it from frozen, do it low and slow. Great on the campfire, great on the barbecue, awesome in the oven. And these are delicious. I really like to have choco meat in the freezer all the time. All the time. Yeah. It is kind of a staple because you can do it with so many things with it, right? And it's super kid friendly. For summer, what we often do with choco meat, whether we're camping, on vacation, or at home, is the walking tacos. So if you don't know, that's when you use the small bags of Doritos or Fritos or um, you can also do them with like an all dress chip or you can just whatever kind of chip you want and think your kids will like. Some people do them with cheesies, like Cheetos. Oh, interesting. I think that sounds disgusting. But I think they should be at, very, at the very least like taco tacos. <laughs> yeah, we, we do like, we usually do it with the mini Dorito bags. And you can do like whatever flavor, the, the sweet chili heat or the mm -hmm. nacho cheese or whatever flavor cool you ranch. want. The Cool Ranch cool Doritos. Ranch. That That's takes me too. back to the 90s. Holy cow. And so all you do is you, squi like you squish your bag so that you break up those chips. And then you add your taco meat right into the bag. And then some lettuce, tomato, green onions, avocado, like whatever you usually put on your tacos, some cheese whatever it is that you like, black olives, anything. And then you just shake the bag up, like you seal it obviously before you shake it, otherwise, you know. Um, <laughs> and you just give that a shake and then you can give them one of those like disposable forks or if you're at home, you can give them a real fork and they can, well, as the name suggests, walk around with their taco and eat it. And just, it is so much fun, uh, but really delicious. You can also put some salsa, hot sauce, like whatever. Anything that goes on your taco goes in that bag and it is perfect. But you can also use your taco meat for obviously tacos. You can use it for on nachos. You can stir it into pasta and then top it with some cheese. And once it's baked, you can add some diced tomatoes. We really like to do that. Um, or you can even have it for breakfast to stir into your hash browns or scrambled eggs. So it's just really good to have taco meat on hand. And my kids love a, a taco Tuesday, like just plain tacos, they'll, they'll take them. So our taco meat is a little bit different than the traditional taco meat. What you're gonna do is in your large freezer bag, you're gonna put some ground beef that's already browned, some minced onion, taco seasoning. We buy ours in bulk or make it ourselves. So it's four tablespoons, but you could also use a packet if you prefer. And then some tomato sauce, chili sauce, and some shredded cheddar cheese, which gives it like a really nice consistency once it gets melted and it's just really creamy and delicious. You're going to just shake that all up in there, take out your excess air, because when you're freezer cooking, air is not your friend. It causes the freezer burn. So we're gonna avoid that when we're, whenever we can. And then you just seal it, freeze it, and on the day you go to make this, you can cook it up in your skillet, in the microwave, in the slow cooker. Like, there is no way that you can't heat this stuff up, right? It's taco meat. That's totally true. When we had our we had a year-end roundup for my son's band class and we had a show and shine. One of the menu items we had at our concession stand was tacos in a bag or walking tacos. And they, here's your little mini bag. They turned it on its side and cut the top off that way oh. so that it opened up like a boat. That's interesting. It was interesting and I wanted to tell you about it and I forgot until right now because she's the walking taco queen. <laughs> But these are walking taco boats. That this is a taco is cool. boat. And so you still put the stuff in, yeah. hard to roll up and shake, of course, but you still have a fork and you can mix it around like yeah. a taco salad. And I thought that was really interesting and it just it makes it more manageable than digging in from the top. 
That is, I just learned something new. Actually, when I'm with Christy, I often learn new things. We but... learn so much from each other. But I thought that was really interesting. That is interesting. So now you know that that's another way that you can do it. I mean, it's the same thing as a walking taco that you just described. You just totally turn it on your side. Now you can find the recipe for the ham and cheese sliders in the description down below. You can find the recipe for the taco meat in our club. So the link for the club is down below. If you don't know what the club is, our Freezer Meals 101 club allows you to use our tried and true freezer meal recipes and filter by a million different ways. Okay, maybe not a million, but a lot of different ways to figure out what it is that you want. And one of those ways is by typing in kid friendly. And then all of our kid friendly recipes right. will populate. Um, other ways is you can search by protein or cooking method or by ingredient if you find a great sale on something. And then you make a meal plan and it will print out your shopping list according to the serving size that you choose. It'll also print you off a prep list and printable labels with the cooking instructions. It kind of takes all the guesswork and planning out of freezer meals and just allows you to get this done. Absolutely. Um, and you can hit a sale. Say there's a really terrific sale on ground beef, for example. You could go into the club and just click on the ground beef and all our ground beef recipes would come up and you can build a meal plan around those. And then the next week you can do the same thing for chicken breast. Or you could do it for kid friendly. You could do it for no bake because you're going camping and you need easy things to have with you when you're camping. So listen, have a look at the club, see if it's right for you. We have a monthly option. We have an annual option that will save you a bit of money. And our members love the club. If there are any members that are watching today, Throw your testimonial down <laughs> below because really, they only have nice things to say about the club. So you should really check it out. This next recipe is beef and bean burritos. We start out with our ground beef in a bowl. We're gonna add in a couple of tablespoons of the taco seasoning and mix that together. If you were making this from scratch and had raw ground beef, you would do it in the pan, let it simmer, let it cook up with a little bit of water and, and your taco seasoning like that. But when we're making big batches of freezer meals, we brown all our ground beef ahead of time. So in this case, we're just gonna toss it in with our ground beef and we'll get the same effect. On our burrito, on our tortilla, we are going to put a little couple of tablespoons of the ground beef that's been seasoned. We're gonna add some refried beans. We're gonna sprinkle some chopped up bell peppers, some red peppers and green peppers, and a little bit of onion. We're going to very carefully do a burrito roll. So we're gonna fold in our sides and fold in like a little envelope and roll it up nicely so our juices don't leak. And then we will wrap this up in a sheet of foil. So these can be frozen just like this. You wanna put them in a bag, remove all the excess air that you can and go ahead and freeze them. On the day of cooking, you can heat them up in your oven with the foil on. You can remove the foil and put them in your microwave, maybe exchange the foil for some paper towel so that it stays moist and it doesn't dry out on the burrito and enjoy it that way. If you wanted to add cheese to these, you certainly could. And if you wanted to dip them in salsa or sour cream, go ahead and do that. These are an easy grab and go. The kids like them and you don't even have to do anything. Once they're done, like this is totally a self-serve serve option, right? So I was saying earlier that I do have a lot of kids and I have, you know, the four boys and my girls don't eat a lot. I think we've kind of established that my girls eat a little bit like birds and that's why we're able to, you know, a, a meal that will serve six or eight totally feeds my entire family because yeah, again, my girls don't eat as much, but my boys like, oh my, and, mm -hmm. and you know, teen boys, Again, Christy's got one and he's just coming coming into it. Like he's it, coming into the full food, like he into his full stomach. <laughs> so the beef and bean burritos, and we've also got some chicken burritos that we make sometimes. Those things are for my boys, they are late night snacks. Mm -hmm. Like that is their midnight snack or their 10 p.m. like little snack because or sometimes I've seen them make these for breakfast, honestly. Like they just <laughs> 
They don't care, really. They just need to get it in their bodies. And when it's foil, it's kind of nice because it's not a dish and it doesn't end up in their room mm -hmm. where you find it a month later right. because your nose has led you to their room. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, there is something going on more than just the regular billy goat smell here. <laughs> and um, I, I love my son, but he has reached billy goat smell stage of teenagedom <laughs> and uh, we are fully there. Um, and so if, if it's just a foil wrapper in his room, I'm happy with that. <laughs> Another thing when you're feeding kids in the summer is like breakfast and snacks because mm -hmm. it's just kind of a constant uh, that they are hungry all day long. So we're going to put a video up there and then we'll link another one at the end of this video that you can check out some, I guess we'll put breakfasts there and mm -hmm. at the end we'll put a snack video um, because again, this will help you. But this next recipe is one that is a great snack or an on-the-go breakfast. It is good and it's healthy to boot. These are energy bites. We're gonna start out with some old-fashioned oats. We're going to add in some unsweetened coconut, unless you are me and then you might add in instead maybe some sunflower seeds or something that's not coconut because it's not my favorite. And then we're going to add in some peanut butter and then we really get to the add-ins. We're gonna add ground flax seeds, some chocolate chips, some melted honey, and some hemp hearts for extra protein, and a little blob of vanilla extract. Get all these mixed really nicely together. They do form nicely into little balls. You can use a little cookie scoop to form them, or sometimes we mention it's handy if you wanna have a uniform size, if that's important to you, um, or if it's important to your kids. <laughs> you can use like a quarter cup measuring spoon, scoop that, and then that will make two, two tablespoon sized balls. So I hope that helps you out. These ones really are done. There are no bake. Now, if you're finding it's a little bit uh, crumbly, you might want to add a bit more honey. Or if you're finding that they're a little bit too soft and they're not staying together for that reason, you might want to add a little bit more oats or a bit more of one of your other mix-ins. But so it's kind of a, a feel, but this is the general idea. And like I mentioned before, if there's anything in here that you want to trade, if you wanted to add, you know, the sunflower seeds instead of the coconut, you can, it's got a bit of wiggle room on what works for you. So then we're going to put these on a cookie sheet as we make them, freeze them individually, because then when we add them to a freezer bag, they won't stick together. Now, when you take these out, they thaw fairly quickly, but if you, I have taken these camping or, or like hiking. If they get too warm, they will start to like melt together a little bit. So this is something that you kind of want to either package separately if you're going to do that, or just be aware that it might not be a perfect ball by the time you get to the top of the waterfall. And that's okay <laughs> because they'll still be appreciated. The nutrition is still there. The energy is still there and they're still delicious. Yeah, one of my sons in particular, it's almost like I don't want him to know that these are in the house because he just is like, every time he passes by the freezer, it's like open, grab, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Right. And so not that I didn't make them for the kids to eat, but I do want some of the other kids to be able to enjoy them as well. <laughs> that's right. And that's it. And they're little and easy to like disappear. Yeah. But it does make a lot. Yeah, it does it makes make a, a good, lot. a good chunk of these. So and you should be good. You can double it yeah. because really it's it's not a whole lot more work. Yes, you're going to be rolling them a little bit longer, but it's not a lot more work. And that is a great one to have your kids help with. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of the recipes that we've made here today, your kids could totally help or they could even do them. And the great thing is, is that with the labels with the cooking instructions on them, your kids, depending on their age, but really they can take over the cooking on the day of. They can reheat taco meat. Mm -hmm. They can warm up a burrito. Absolutely. They can put some ham and cheese sliders into the oven or, mm -hmm. you know. So I don't know about on the campfire, depending on their age, right? <laughs> we don't, we're not gonna suggest you get your kids to play with fire, but. <laughs> if it's supervised, I think it's totally fine. I would totally trust my, my 13 year old and my 15 year old daughter, they could do any of these. And um, that is a real help to me. 
So hopefully this is giving you lots of great ideas for <laughs> helping feed your kids this summer, those hungry, hungry kids. We're gonna put a video right there to some make ahead snacks and lunches that are kid friendly. And hopefully that will give you even more ideas so you can just keep them fed all the time. <laughs> and good luck with that. <laughs> Thanks for watching today. Happy cooking.